This is Scott Richmond and Arnie Sherman. You're listening to What Do You Know on News Talk KGVO, AM 1290 and 101.5 FM. Good morning, Arnie Sherman. How are you today? Scott, I'm doing really good. And I was thinking this morning on the way over yes. about we have a good mix going, you know, the last few weeks on the show. We've had shows about entertainment. We've had shows about business and entrepreneurship. And this week, we're going to mix both together, entrepreneurship, business, and entertainment, because we have a show about sex toys. Okay. And um, what's the name of the company? The name of the company, we have Meg Ross from the Nookie Box okay. coming on. But I want to first talk about, break this concept of sex toys down. Okay. First, I want to talk about toys. Okay. So as a kid growing up, <laughs> toys meant Milton Bradley, Mattel, right. Hasbro. You know, we had things like Tinker Toys. I guess what uh, Mattel had um, um, uh, and Hasbro had Yahtzee. Probably the closest <laughs> thing we ever got to the sex part with toys was Twister. Do you remember Twister? Sure. There was a reason for playing Twister. You get all wrapped up with somebody else. and That, that was about the closest uh, thing we got. Other than made-up games like Spin the Bottle. Right. And a New York favorite, and I'm sure in Jersey, too, was Seven Seconds in Heaven. Did you ever play that yeah, game? Yeah, or Truth or Dare. Truth or Dare. That, right, Truth know, or the Dare. The whole combination of that. Right, right, right. So our toy experience in the past was limited. Right. Let me talk about the sex part. Pleasure, right. You know, growing up, that was sort of, you know, you, my parents didn't come and give me that Birds and the Bee speech. They relied on on Coach Mulligan. You probably in your school, Coach but Mulligan. at Farmingdale High School, we had a course called Personal Hygiene, right? Health Personal ed. Hygiene. Health. Yeah, health. Health class. And when and the boys were separated from the girls. Coach right? Mulligan. This seems like the 15th century. The boys were separated from the girls. And when we got around to the part about sex, Coach Mulligan came in walked into the class, I'm not exaggerating, and said, use condoms. Thank you. Coach and Mulligan. walked out. And then they showed an animated video of little sperm swimming up some river. You know, and that was our version of uh, sex, of sex ed. education and, you know, sex toys. Right. To me, it meant nothing. You know, and today we're going to talk about what's happening in this fascinating business which is a curated sex subscription product service. Right. And, uh, you know, Meg will be joining us uh, uh, shortly to this talk about This is a local it. Missoula company. Yeah, you know, and it had an article in Slate magazine that really took, you know, took off. And, uh, and you know, I don't want to give away, uh, you know, some of, the, uh, some of the details. But she has a real interesting business on, on her hand. And I think some of it ties in to the phenomena that everybody wants to be a better lover or partner. No one ever says, I want to get worse at doing this stuff. Right. Right? You know, there were whole Seinfeld episodes about the move, right? right and right. all this kind of, right. you know, everybody wants to know and, and, and get better. And it's not just women. I'm sure we're going to find out it's men, too. And uh, there are shops that provide these kinds of products, but you feel kind of, you know, awkward about walking into them. Mail you, order is the thing. You know, I think it is the thing. Not about, that I you know, know, but I know. You know, I mean, you feel like if you're walking in by yourself, you should have a trench coat on and dark glasses. And right. You're going to look a little out of place in a town like Missoula dressed like that. So this is the 21st century version of uh, being able to provide to yourself and your loved one, um, you know, some extra added, um, I guess, uh, you know, intrigue, stimulation, um, you know, trying to uh, bring back the old feelings or whatever, it's, you know, wh whatever. And we're going to find out from her who their clients are, what their products are, how they f choose them and pick them. And uh, <laughs> I think it's incredible. You know, the, this whole con concept of like subscription based gifts right. and products, e.g. Harry's, uh, what is it, the Shave Club or Jack Thre Jack's Threads or birch box or blue apron this whole concept is really like you know with the advent of technology and targeted media anybody could subscribe right and you know there are things you can even subscribe to get uh, to get um sewing supplies and sewing oh, sure. patterns and but in this particular case the it's club. unique 
because people are shy. Many, many people that would like, you know, a little bit more anonymity. Yeah, you know, or, or a little bit more zest, or oh, or right. you know, in their in their love life, are kind of embarrassed in in a way, or shy. Let's use shy, shy maybe not embarrassed. You know, we talk about it in the locker room, but they're modest. Know, there are shops in every town that you drive by and you kind of look to see who's going in, right. and you don't go in yourself, right? Even right. though there may be some little gift on a birthday or an anniversary, right. That might spice things up, right? So. She's Meg's providing talk, a service. Yes. Meg's going to talk to us about uh, the Nookie Box and how that all fits into this uh, new 21st century of blending sex, toys, and and uh, you know technology together to make, uh, to make an interesting business model. And the subscription business. Sure. All right. Well, when we come back on What Do You Know with Scott Narney, we'll be joined by Meg Ross, founder of the Nookie Box, here on KGVO, back after this. Good morning, Meg. How are you yeah, doing? Yeah, good morning. Man, thank you. Good morning. So let me ask I'm you this well. right off the bat. We've mentioned the Nookie Box, thenookiebox.com, which everybody's going to run to after the show's over. But how'd you get started in the business? Oh, man, how did I get started in the business? In this business. <laughs> First of all, how did you get to Missoula? Well, you know, I actually grew up here. You I'm did? from Missoula. I went to Loyola for high school. Sorry. That's okay. Speaking to the mic. Yeah. I, I grew up here. I went to Missoula and, or to Loyola. Um, so you went to Catholic school? I did. And oh now you're God. in the sex toys business. I what know, a great, right? what a great migration path. She's in the gift giving business. That's yes, right. They don't, they don't keep me on their mailing list anymore. <laughs> I don't understand why. Yeah. So wait a second. So you, so you grew up here. Then when did you move back? When did you move out East? I moved to New York when I was 17. With for college or no, just I, for... I went I was a nanny. I just okay. wanted to get away from Missoula and experience life on a different level and and uh, from there I I started figuring out what I was good at and I was good at business and right. I, I moved from New York to San Diego to Detroit back to New York and uh, And you worked for a family in Manhattan when you first moved there? No in Chappaqua. Oh, in Chappaqua, yeah, Hillary Clinton. Yeah, where the Clintons? I'm right. right around the corner from the Clintons. Is that right? Yeah, yeah. We're both right East there. Coasters, if you couldn't tell. Mm-hmm. Okay. Chappaqua. Chapp- Cherry, Cherry Hill was the name of the road. Cherry Hill in mm-hmm. Chappaqua? Yeah. Right. How long were you, you there for, from 17 until when? Uh, 17 until 18, and then I left New York, went to San Diego, went to Got Detroit, it. back to New York. Detroit. <laughs> San Diego to Detroit. I no. love Detroit, by the way. Yeah, twi- really? I'm a huge fan. Well, that's good. That do, you is, fo- but it- do you follow the sports teams from yes. Detroit? Good. good. Lions fan, Red Wing fan, Tigers fan. I, nice. I am a fan. Nice. All right, so your exposure to the East Coast and San Diego and Detroit business, you realized business was for you. So what was mm-hmm. your first kind of, um, you know, venturing into that world? What were your... What experiences did you have? I mean, honestly, I started by selling cosmetics in a Neiman Marcus. In Manhattan, and in uh, in Detroit, okay, actually, and then <laughs> needless um, markup, right? Exactly, yeah. needless markup. That's exactly what everyone called it that was working there as well. So it's fine. Sure. Uh, and then I was kind of recruited by the people from Paul Mitchell to open up a cosmetology school from them. I just I met the right people, and they said you should be a director of a school. And I went, why? Wow. And then I did it. Right, and then <laughs> and then from there into the beer business. Well, I, you know, practicing. I, I was, <laughs> practicing. <laughs> I can make beer. That's so good. that was a good thing. But I don't think that I can make beer better than the people that are making beer here. So I We have a good, of, vibrant community. But tell us about, uh, tell us about uh, you know, the, the brewery experience. Because brewery and leading to sex makes a lot of sense. To yeah, me. exactly. Well, alcohol and sex. That's These right. things do go hand in hand sometimes. <laughs> they walk hand in is hand. Is in that kit, is there a bottle of something? That no, we know? there's not. We're not encouraging <laughs> that, All right. actually. Keep it, let's keep going on her trajectory. <laughs> <laughs> you just trying to avoid SEX. So I I'm not avoiding it. No, no. no, but I want to I want to hear more about Meg's background sure. and then what led her to the Nookie Box. Right. So I, I actually was not planning on moving back to Missoula. I'm my dad called me one day and said, Meg, I really want to open up a brewery. And What year are we talking about? Oh, got it. That was, uh, that was about four and a half years ago now. 2012. Okay. Yeah. okay. And I, I just kept kind of pushing him off and pushing him off. And then finally I went, you know what? Fine. I'll come home. Let's see what we can do. And I, I dove right into the whole brewery thing. And we all, we were really close to opening a brewery. And then I just kind of looked at him and I was like, you know what, this isn't my passion and I don't think this is the right thing for us to be doing. Can we do something else? 
And he uh, didn't know what I was thinking <laughs> with the, something else. Uh, and I spent huh. a little bit of time working on the project by myself. And then I kind of announced that this is what I wanted to do. I, I wanted to be in the subscription world. Right. And sex toys was the, the direction. And I had my own reasons. And dad was the first person to like my Facebook page. He was also the first person to unlike so it. So could you say in general there's <laughs> been a positive family reaction to this work? Or is there any yeah. naysayers that, you know, around? For For yeah, my, my family loves what well, what, we right. the, what were the reasons, if you don't mind sharing that with, like, what was the impetus of this? Like, why this I mean, There's a category? lot of things you can subscribe for, right? Right. Sure. You yeah. could have the Shave Club. You could have yeah. done Blue Apron. Yeah. There's so many different kinds of things that people are selling through subscription services. Right. I think that, that there's something missing in this particular industry in terms of sex toys. Um, I think that we, there's a lot of people... Um, serving primarily a heterosexual kind of uh, world and there's right. other people that want sex toys. And so I just kind of saw it from a business perspective that, you know, there's gay and lesbian uh, couples. There's there's people that want to just feel good about themselves. It doesn't have to be all about Victoria's sure. Secret models. Sure. So let me ask you this. What about for old people? Yeah. <laughs> like us. Yeah. You know, is there, is, you know, is, is age have Demographic. any... Demographic. Any... Play in this. I mean, Absolutely. you know who your customers are. Yeah. Do you what, what? What's this? What's the spectrum? Yeah. What, of, uh, yeah what do they? What do they not look like? But how do they fit in the spectrum? Let me ask you a quick question, though. So, how long have you been in business? Since February. Since February of 2016. Yeah. We just, wow. So you just started. You just oh. started, and um, and how many customers? Well, don't give us raw numbers, but where are your customers from? All over the United States. So all U.S. Over. Everywhere in the United States, yes. Every state. And how are they finding out about you? Right now through uh, some of our social media, because we have a lot of social media going on, and we have a, a really great PR company. Right, you, you got written in, written up in Slate, and that, yeah, doesn't, that yeah. doesn't hurt at all. Cosmo is, Cosmo. is writing something up on, on so us PR in PR has been very, really yeah. strong. Yeah. And then you're using social media to amplify that and to yeah. push it out. And are, how many Facebook friends do you have right now? Uh, I think we're at like around 800. 800. 800, really? Yeah. So you really are very new. Yeah. Are you, um, and... By the way, I haven't sk seen Scott this animated since we started this show <laughs> six months ago. He's just I all pumped up. I can't wait to see him open the box. <laughs> well, you know what it is? I'm fascinated. Not so much... The category, I understand the category, and I understand why people would want this, because there's right. a convenience factor. There's a factor of being able to be anonymous. There's a factor of being able to gift it. There's a lot of great things that go into this. That's why I love your business model. But I'm also fascinated with subscription businesses, because mm -hmm. I think that... Um, just, you know, the aforementioned Blue Apron and all these other things, they're taking off and they're only, it's only becoming more valuable. And what's really important is that name that you have, that name in that credit card, the value that you have of having somebody like that is, you can't, you know, what is the value of that? We don't know yet. We're going to find out, right? We are. Right. So tell us, <laughs> Big. Little, tell us a little bit about, we have two questions unanswered. We're so not 50 let states. You fly by, slide by. One is, how'd you choose... This particular product area, and then secondly, yes. a little bit about you know your your client base in general, your customer base in general. What do they look sure. like? So to start with, I chose the sex toy subscription world not because I'm some huge sex toy expert necessarily, but because I recognized that there was a need within the subscription services sure. to offer this kind of product. Sure, and I spoke to enough people in my kind of close knit circles that were saying, you know, Meg, you're really great at talking to people about their sex lives. And maybe this is something that you should consider. And I said, well, I'm not an expert. So why should I consider it? They said, but you're really, you're an expert at figuring out who the experts are and putting them all together. So I, it just kind of fell together. Or honestly, it, it fell sure. together. So now, now in the short period of time, what what's what does it look like? What's the demographics look like of your man? We have we have customers from New York to Florida to Texas to <laughs> Hawaii. Uh, Alaska, everywhere. There's not one state in the union that hasn't ordered from us. That are subscribers or that are buying a la carte? Most of, I would say that 90% of the people that have bought from us are subscribers. And what's the subscription package uh, look like? So it's $80 every quarter. Right. Or you can uh, buy the whole year for $300. Um, so you get a little bit of a discount. And there. what happens every quarter? As I, I read somewhere that it's sort of themed. And yes. Your, 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 your team... 
decides on something? Yeah, so we, we create a theme around each quarter. So the first quarter was sex is fun. Right. So we, we chose products that seemed fun okay. and playful. And and in that, I, I mean that we actually added Pop Rocks into right. our first box because it was a fun thing to inc- right. incorporate. But also the, the products that we choose to put into the box um, are written about in the erotic stories that are included in the in the box as well. So that's like our suggested nookie. Right. And where are you sourcing all these products from? Are you are these being made for you, uh, you know, uh, custom, or are you finding them from different places around the world? Yeah, I, kind of from all over the place. I mean, uh-huh. we're not making our products ourselves quite yet. I mean, I would love to do that very quickly. Eventually, you yeah, will, though. Absolutely, right? that's part of the business plan. But mm-hmm. I mean, again, we just started when we were in. Oh, I mean. We started in February. Right, three, so, three months ago. Right after so Fifty Shades of Grey right. movie. If you were up then, you would have had a certain kind of um, yes, inquiry, right? Yes. Do and you get inquiries? Have. Do people do people make requests? Absolutely, yeah, people do. I I had um, put something out on Twitter one day saying, "Anybody have any suggestions for our next box?" and uh. and I got lots of responses. But the best one was, um, "If you have a glass." specific box i would absolutely buy it glass specific yeah all glass products really well let me tell you from my personal <laughs> my, Uh-oh, from over here we here. go if you have one if you have a theme like it, you're never too old <laughs> let me know and i may you know if you have like a, a cane and a walker and you know something we, like that let me do we do, we do have a box like that <laughs> let me do a quick box. idea let me do a quick idea Art. <laughs> Our guest is Meg Ross with the Nookie Box here on What Do You Know with Scott and Arnie. Meg Ross, um, so business since February, over 800 friends on uh, right. Facebook, customers all over the country. Right. And how's your sales trajectory? Is it better yes. than you thought or is it or is it not as good as you thought? Oh, or? it's amazing. I'm better than I thought, for sure. That's, that's terrific. Yeah. How many new customers do you get every day? On a day or a week. Well, when, when Cosmo article hits, it's going to yeah. be you. As 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 Donald Trump says, and you you may want to send him a gift. It's going to be huge. <laughs> I have huge hands. Yeah, you know, exactly. he may he may need some assistance. Yeah, you know, no kidding. He brags to the uh, other extreme. He we have John need... Miller as PR agent. Yeah, that's right. John. <laughs> it's huge. Anyway, so 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 wait a second. So trajectory like new customers, you're every week new customers coming in. Yeah, I mean every day new customers are coming in. So I I, I can't say a specific amount, but I mean it's just sales are climbing. Are you figuring out where they're coming from? Are you able to look at your Google Analytics and tell <laughs> yeah. what what yeah. states, what markets, what devices? We always know what states they're coming from because uh-huh. obviously we have to ship to them. But um, yeah, we're we're definitely starting to measure. Uh, where they're they're hearing about us, right? Um, and as we as we do more of of our marketing, we'll right. we'll be able to really uh, hone in on that. It's going to take some time. Do you find that mm. men or women are more shy about their needs and desires and wants, or is it about equal? I well, I think that both men and women are shy on lots of levels, and I I think that Modest. both men and women have things that they want to ask questions about and want answers to and want to be able to talk about. So are you going to have a column to answer questions that people have? Yeah, or do yeah. you have one? Well, we're, we're starting to create uh, different types of blog posts to answer questions that people do send in to us. But we're also going to um, start over the next couple of weeks a, a question and answer uh, series on Twitter with our, thank you, <laughs> with our, um, our resident sex expert as well. And who is your resident sex expert? Her name is Callie Little, and she's in Seattle. And is she actually trained in this area? She she's is. not self-taught. She has uh, some kind of yeah. uh, academic background to prepare she, her to be the, to do this. Yep, she does. Well, that's terrific. Yeah. Well, you know, this is all content marketing. So basically, you're using all this great content you're creating because people love talking about mm-hmm. this, and that's marketing her business. How do you, so where are you sourcing your products from? So how are you, are, is there an R&D because department? Because wants to bypass you and go direct. <laughs> no, but is there, are, are you doing R&D? Are you testing things out? We are. You know, and I'm being, this is very yeah. personal, but no, like, you know, if something doesn't work, you don't want to recommend it. It's, yeah. You know. So it, there's there's a combination of ways that we do that. I mean, one, now people are starting to hear about us, meaning vendors, and they're starting to send us things directly. And then they they send a bunch of samples and say, hey, did you like any of those? And I can't get to them fast enough and mm-hmm. hand them out to people fast enough. But I do have a team of what I would call minions. 
right. tastemakers or, or testers. Right. Um, and they uh, they take things whenever I have stuff that I'm kind of interested in finding out about quickly. Right. Um, and give me feedback for when sure. You say minions and testers. For some reason, I got this bizarre <laughs> mental image of the little flying monkeys from the Wizard of Oz. <laughs> You're being tested. Oh my God! Bring my testers <laughs> exactly. together. Exactly. Testers together. So let me ask you something. As as you found out being in the business, I know it's only been a short time. Do you think? Pornography, because this is, you know, it's, it's not that you're doing pornography, but does pornography help or hurt couples based on your experience or based on your research or based on what your couple, your consultants tell you? I, I mean, I think that it's a, there's a pros and cons to all pornography. So mm -hmm. um, I definitely don't want to take a solid stand on, on what people like in the bedroom, but I, I will say that there's, there's a difference between uh, safe porn and right. negative. Sure. Porn. I mean, there are extremes in everything. Yes. But you do include in your kit erotic stories. Yeah. Is there audio? Uh, are there audio or is it just written stories? Just written. And and I, my guess is it's set up so that the partners could read to each other and help heighten the uh, the experience. Yeah, that's right? exactly right. We're, so we're, we're hoping that, I mean, whether they're comfortable reading to each other or not, I mean, hopefully they are, and if they're not, then they, right. one of them could read it. The other one could. It. it but you're it's making all about, by, by by preparing that though. How you're making some judgments about what would be good content to include in you know under the topic that you've chosen. So sure. if you choose sex is funny, right. you know, or sex is hot, mm -hmm. or you know, or or you know, you know, more sex is needed, or whatever the topic is, you're going to tie a story into that to make it. Uh, to, to make it fit. And so you are to some way self-selecting what you think fits in the mainstream. And I guess over time you'll get more feedback from your clientele about what their predilections or interests are. Yeah. You'll, you'll spin the, the uh, boxes in that direction. Sure. I mean, one of the things that we're doing right now is that, that we're, we always include a straight gay and a lesbian story. So you choose mm -hmm. the box that you want, and then you get to choose which story you want included in that. Mm -hmm. And and the um, whole idea behind the story is really that we're trying to give people ideas of ways that they could use the products. Mm -hmm. So that's why it's called the suggested nookie. So right. that's the erotica is the suggested nookie. But now, so they don't have to use it that way, and we always say that to them. But it's just one suggestion. You know what's nice about this business is that there's no judgment in any of this. This is just you are you're going you know you're celebrating people's mm -hmm. right. desire and how do you enhance and heighten their desire for each other for their whatever it is. Mm -hmm. So it's all good news, right? So yeah. you're you're in the business of good news always, right? Right, and a good product. And so um, I am curious: are there are there customer is there customer feedback and reviews that you're getting, and how do you handle a negative review? Because I'm imagining you've had to have a negative review Somebody as much as you've had positive review. This isn't what I was hoping it would be. Sure, I, I mean I think number one, we've gotten more positive reviews than negative reviews at this point, which is great. That is that makes me feel good. Uh, but we definitely have had negative reviews. And what would be the, the substance of those? Of negative? Just, yeah. you know, people saying, I, I didn't feel like this spoke to me or this product sure. wasn't the right product for me. Um, you know, and, and that we have to accept that that's the kind of feedback that we're going to get occasionally. I, and I always do a little bit of research on the people that are sending me those reviews so right. that I have a I have background on who they are as well. So I have an a understanding of who my, my Most customers Most of them are in correctional are. facilities, That's I'm sure. Right. No, All but of you them know, have you, been. And you got to be mindful of the fact that you may get somebody from a competing business that's trying to hate on it. And that's not Which good. Which I have no. had. Yeah, that's sure. right. This is this is called reputation management, and so the good news is it sounds like you're you're hopping on on these on responding Absolutely. quickly. One hundred percent. You have to. right away. You have to to acknowledge that that they've said something. You have to to thank them for taking the time out of their day to say something to you. Right. I mean that's super important. If you're if you're not acknowledging how valuable somebody's time is, and that they sat down with the explicit understanding that they were going to send you information, whether it's positive or negative, doesn't make any difference. You have to thank them for that time. Absolutely. I want to further explore one of the points that you made. Not mm -hmm. every woman looks like a Victoria's Secrets model, mm -hmm. and not every man out there looks like he's on the cover of GQ, right? Right. And so there are self-esteem issues involved. People, you know, are 
unhappy. I mean, what's the biggest industry in America is, is probably dieting, right? Everybody, right. everybody wants to lose Self-help, weight. Self-help, right. It's everybody's New Year's resolution. Mm-hmm. So how do you deal with the issue of self-esteem uh, to make sure people are comfortable you know, you know, doing using your products in a in a sexy way when they may not initially feel very sexy, and they're trying sure. to figure out how to you know bring that feeling back again. Yeah, I mean, I, that's a great question. First of all, number number one is we've started this campaign called "I Am Sexy," and we've actually asked all of our uh, followers to submit stories about why they think that they're sexy. And we include a picture of them if they want or a picture of something that makes them feel sexy. So mm-hmm. we're, we're just trying to en- encourage people to talk about what makes them feel really good about themselves. I was having a conversation with somebody in uh, New York City just a few weeks ago. I was there for my sister's wedding and she was a 65 year old woman. And, and at the end of the day, she said to me before she left, thank you so much. I have not had anyone ask me the question, why am I, I why do I feel sexy mm-hmm. in 40 years? Wow. Wow. And she said, I'm going to go home right now and write you a story. And that's terrific. it's amazing. That really so it so really cl- starts a lot of conversations that way. That's one of our campaigns. So your clients are actually, so your clients and customers are submitting their own stories. Yeah, wow. absolutely. So we're trying to get them engaged. That's part of it. And I think that that's part of the process that makes us and will continue to make us successful. But in terms of um, products that we choose for mm-hmm. the boxes as well, we, we purposely don't choose any products that have any negative imagery on them. Mm -hmm. So if it's specific to a woman that's completely naked, we're not going to use that product. It's because that's not something that makes you feel sexy if you don't look like that. Right. You're not going to put Donald Trump's picture on any of this. Are you, um, so the, so you get all the products and you put together the boxes and you're creating the, the packaging, which is beautiful. Mm -hmm. So the, the, the delivery and the receiving of the box and the delight that the recipient gets from seeing this, you, that whole process, you're you're really looking at every step of the way, right? Yeah, absolutely. Like one hundred percent. And um, I'm imagining that sometimes you're encountering packaging of the products. Sometimes, like you were saying, that's either negative in connotation or also a little um, uh, that may look a little cheap. Or sure. how do you deal with that? What do you do? Do you? Well, we either don't use the the product, or do you repackage it? We can in some cases. So there's some things that we've repackaged, but very few. I, I mean, we we're gonna we're gonna be very selective about those kinds of. Well, you're products. trying to you know th- huh. th- this is a business mm-hmm. you know this is not a social service agency. Right. You're trying to make money. Right. You're charging eighty dollars each quarter. You know you, you you can't sell them eighty dollars worth of product or else you're gonna be out of business pretty quick. Sure. So you have to you have to be able to select the right combination of things. Well, retail but, price. Right. <laughs> right. Retail, retail price. versus all, right. We're, we're they're they're actually getting about one hundred and fifty dollars worth of product for every box. Is that sure. right? Yeah, really? absolutely. If they were to buy it, every so you're piece getting a, in, you're getting a better deal. And, and absolutely, yeah. Oh, that's Arnie's good. We get, my, we get good deals. Okay, Arnie's and my guest is Meg Ross with the Nookie Box here on What Do You Know. So let me let me ask you this: What are the top things that men or women or both? should do to get more satisfaction from their partners based on the kind of feedback you're getting? I mean, what are they not doing that they ought to be doing? I don't think they're talking to each other enough. Right. That's the big thing. I mean, you just have to talk about what you want. I I think that we have been raised culturally to just ignore the things that we want and give to other people what they want. And we have this sense of shame and fear about talking about our own sexuality and, and what makes us feel good or, or what we desire. Well, it's based on that, I'm going to share something with oh, you. Good. When I'm home oh, and it's dark <laughs> at night and I'm in break. bed, yeah, I want milk and cookies. Can you put <laughs> some in the next box? I might, I might buy that one. There might be something that has to do with a cookie in the, in the next box. Well, okay, but you hit on a really interesting thing, which is as now you open the, you know, you open the communication with your customers using sex toys as mm-hmm. the first thing, but you really can branch out into other product lines as you start to gain their trust yeah. and build this brand. Have you given any thought to that, like where else you might be able to go with this, or is it just too new? Well, I mean, we do have a long-term vision about uh, where we want to take the company, and mm-hmm. and really the the main arm that I would I would feel comfortable talking about right now is what we what we're calling the Nookie U. So basically, sex education and a platform for people to communicate together about some of these things. So online courses. Uh, yeah, there's going to be seminars. There'll be there'll be lots of different uh, things that people can Arnie, put together. This is. 
okay, this is an incredible idea, right? Because one of the things that I learned from somebody here in Missoula who's a personal trainer is that they do a subscription-based cor- you know, video courses every week. You know, you can, you can dial into your trainer and get all the advice. Sure. This is kind of where you're going, correct? Similar, yeah. I mean, we, we would have this platform as something where there's free information, but then there's also things that you could pay for that that would be sure. separate. Yeah. Right, and maybe wow. what you're paying for is a little bit more customized. Yeah, you know, absolutely. Obviously, that, that based on what you're... You know what you're de- desirous of, and and who it depends on who is going to be the guest um, that's speaking or doing the seminar or that kind of thing. So, so. you do have a business plan and you have a business direction yes. and a business model, and you have growth and expansion besides just <laughs> taking that same box, you know, the but box and just sending right. sending boxes out to more and more people. <laughs> Whoa, yes, it's so a company! Oh my wow. god, <laughs> it's more than. A, well, I've always said that if you just have one thing, you're not a company. You're right. you have, you're a product. Yeah. So, t- so, so you, you have to have diversity in that. We do. Yeah. You're shipping UPS or FedEx or both? <laughs> uh, USPS. USPS. Yep. So do they Cheaper. come to the? They come to where are your office is located or your warehouse located? <laughs> my um, offices are located in the front part of my home. Oh really? Uh-huh. <laughs> so That's I have, fine. I live in a in a duplex, so there's an office on one side and my apartment's on the other. Is and are it, they are there, coming to you to get to pick up the packages, yes. or are you bring it to them? Yeah, they're coming to. Are and they're trackable, correct? Yes, absolutely. Okay. Okay. No, no, no. I love this stuff. I, I mean, I'm yeah. fascinated by mail order businesses. Oh, yeah. well, I think you ought to start <laughs> one, and I have a product line for you. But, but <laughs> milk and cookies. <laughs> yeah, milk and cookies. Are there states where they don't accept the products that you're sending? You're selling? Uh, no. So you can sell. You can send, you know, sex toys, vibrators, and the other sorts of things through the mail to every state. Every state. Okay. I can't sell some products, meaning like I couldn't sell a lube that included uh, cannabis in it. Right. To ah, every state. Not yet, but you can sell it to Connecticut. Oh, right. I mean, Colorado and Washington. <laughs> and who Washington. Would, who are the Why big would I competitors in this space? I'm just curious. Is it Adam and Eve? I mean, like. No, the- they're they're actually not. Um, at, I mean, not as far as I know, under their own name. Uh-huh. Uh, but there, there are a couple of competitors. There's the Unbound Box and mm-hmm. um, a couple of others. But they're they do different things. Their their model is specific to women, number one. Right. Um, and 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 they just have different. They have different products, and they well, don't well, curate what's, the box. What's really good about the curated part of this, which is right. is you might think you know what you want. And you go out and buy that thing. Right. But this gives you an opportunity to explore other things that maybe you didn't consider to, to put in your quiver. Great recommendations. You know, and yes. recommendations and ways to use them and a story to get you in the mood and tracked in the right, right. direction. This gives you an experience yeah. versus just, I'm going to go online and order, you know, condoms or, you know, f- right. uh, flavored condoms or something. I like think that. this, look, this is the, like, you know, why. I see you signing up already. <laughs> no, <laughs> but people love Blue Apron because they love someone selecting foods for them. Sure. To prepare right. Or wines, the wine clubs. Or, or wines or cigars or beers. So, Meg, so you're shipping a lot of product out of your home. You're doing all the pick packing and shipping. Uh, do you have people that are working for you? Do you have any part-time help, or are you doing it right now all yourself? I, I do have a couple of uh, college students that help me uh, on kind of an intern basis, and then um, I have someone that's helping me with some of the web development stuff and the marketing. Mm-hmm. Uh, and then I have my parents and my sisters. Wonderful. You know, it's a I family mean, business. It's like my, my mom comes in and packs boxes. Does she, she will, know what everything is? She doesn't. She doesn't want to either, and that's <laughs> She's fine. packing it. She doesn't know what it is. Mac, what, what do is you do this with thing? This? What do you do with this contraption? It looks like it's here to launch a space satellite. What's very nice about your product is they have a limited number of SKUs, okay? So that, which is really important because that's hard to manage a bunch of inventory. Right. Inventory management is one of the hardest things mm-hmm. with something like this. Well, sure. Yeah, and, and particularly if you... If you Create an inventory of stuff that doesn't sell, then you're stuck with a lot of. Now, do you have a do you ever have a situation where you know, uh, all right, this well, you're, it's too new, I guess, but you know, this quarter we have this box for this thing, and if we run out, we run out, yeah, right? Which is, scarcity and yeah. creating demand, which is what we're doing right now. I mean, when when we sell out of the product for quarter one's box, it's gone. I'm not ordering more. Okay, of that and we're very close to that point. We're hoping that that happens over the next week or so. Uh, there, there's also a couple of signature boxes that we start to create, and we're going to create a lot more signature boxes. Those are just one-off boxes. Sure. And we just we we stock five of them at a time, and as they sell out, we order more. And if they don't sell, then we we repurpose. So great the inventory stuff. management on your part. Yeah. You're not laying out a lot of cash. No. And now, are you um, interesting? So then, 
are folks g- using this for themselves? I mean, how many folks are using this for themselves versus giving them as gifts? Well, so I haven't had anyone purchase a box under the gift button yet. Really? Meaning just wow. literally going online and just pushing gift. But I, I, I will say that I had <laughs> five boxes I just sent all to men. And I'm wondering, are those to their wives? Happy anniversary, yes, exactly. hon. So, I mean, it, it's kind of hard to measure, but uh, it could be a and lot you, of But you do have a gift-giving uh, functionality on your website. So if somebody wants to leave a note and say, Right, and give it to somebody else. thinking of you, happy Valentine's Day yes. or happy birthday or yeah. whatever it is. Absolutely. Yeah. yeah. Very cool. Send it to your boss. Say, <laughs> figure this one out. <laughs> Jeez. Hope this helps. Hope this helps with your problem this week. So let me ask you this. Is is there a difference between what straight and LGBT product interests are? Or there's a lot or is there a lot of overlap between what they want? Yeah, I mean I, I originally my thought was that there would be a lot of separateness that, right. that they were very unique but what, i started what, the, what you know the, the home the, team wants right. is different what the visiting team wants. sure exactly and that was that was my my first instinct right and then i started doing some research and talking to some people and and really the feedback that i got was you know it's just sex right like you're mm-hmm. almost over complicating this right everyone's mm-hmm. going to use them maybe a little differently but the products all do the same things right so that's why we stopped creating separate boxes for each different orientation That's fascinating, and actually, just when you added think about the story. It. Can I make it, yeah, you know, it, 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 here's what I would ask you to do, Meg, okay, is maybe give us a top five, give us a list of something, top five products that people are buying or sure. that are enjoying, and we should include that, Arnie, in our Facebook update when we actually push well, out the on-demand. Sure, demand. sure. Because I think the concept of the, of the, the content creation that you're doing is really the is is the key here because um, it's one of those things where you're going to engage someone and they don't and, and they'll find it and they'll be delighted by it and then they'll they'll become your subscribers. Yeah. Right. You know they'll become your friends and I think we want to help you do that. Yeah. Um, nice. But I think it'll also help us actually sure. get the word out on this show. So let me let me let me drill down a little bit here on a couple of things. Um, what kind of product have you experienced is kind of overrated that you think people think they want a lot of, but it's really kind of overrated? And maybe what isn't appreciated enough? Mm. I, I think that people can spend a lot of money on vibrators. Right. Just, I mean, there is a lot of really great vibrators out there. But you don't necessarily have to spend $300 on one. You right. can, I mean, plus... It gets old. Like, right. You might want to switch it up every once in a while. Right, right, and once right. you spend three hundred dollars on something, you're like gonna want to use it. You don't want to have to give it up. Right. 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 So, right. Yeah. And what's underrated? What kind of things? I mean, it's uh, like just lubes underrated. Yeah, for I example. was actually just gonna say that. I think yeah. lube in general is something that's totally underrated that people are a little intimidated to use. Like, I, I want to break this out. Right. Yeah. No, you should break it out because it doesn't mean there's something wrong with me. It just means that this is gonna be better. Right, and just uh, you know, just in general, sexuality. As you get older, right? You know, body, fu- bo- you know, bodies change, and lubric and and extra lubrication is is useful. Absolutely. And there's so many different kinds too. Right, there's right. so, and we have a lube box. Right. I have to tell you, that's one of my best sellers. Yeah. Is that right? The lube box. People right. love it. It's just had a, a litany of different lubes. So, so people can it, try. We asked this demographic question, but do you actually know who the what the ages are of the people that are buying the products? Uh, no, I don't know the ages of those people. It's not yet. You can look at your Google Analytics. I'm sure we can. We just haven't figured that out yet. Yeah, maybe we'll do a little tutorial. Let's let's. Can we open yes. this box on Please. air? So Meg is, was kind enough to bring Arnie and I a box, not for each other, but for wow. just for the studio. I'd like to open it up. Sure. On air, and we'll be very clean in our description. There's, there's no such thing as dirty there's sex. Nothing, there's, there's nothing, nothing dirty. really well, that big I of a deal. Make sure. in it. This is a mini version of our box. Mini it's version. just a. Commercialized. All right, so I'm opening it up on air. Yeah. Okay, okay, I'm opening it up it. on air. And beautiful packaging. It's an orange uh, 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 crepe paper. What do you call Tissue that? Tissue paper. Tissue paper, beautiful. It's a 45 caliber uh, a six hour. That's the first thing that we're pulling <laughs> out of the box. beautiful box that is, you know, the size of like a, uh, I don't know, seven feet, inches by eight inches, <laughs> or seven inches by seven inches. Then you open it up. And reveals, again, some more tissue paper in their signature color orange with a card that says, Yay Sex, and it says the Nookie Box with Meg's information nice on it. I like the color. It is now this, this tissue paper is bound by a sticker that says, Sex is Fun. 
Right. No one's going to disagree with that, okay? That's right. And it now sounds I, like you're at an archeo- archaeological <laughs> dig. Well, I am. You know, and uh, you know, I should, we should be talking in a British accent. Ah, okay. So here <laughs> we All have right. stickers. Arnie, this is for your, the back of your uh, car. Yeah, yes, the A6. Please. The A6. Perfect. And here's a magnet. This will go on, the, on your refrigerator. Perfect. The Nookie <laughs> okay. box and... Uh, Oh my gosh! So what are these, Meg? These are I'm picking up. These are like little passports of sorts. These so are booklets. So those are the erotic stories. Each, oh, each one. Party ones all. Slowly she turns. No. <laughs> Suggested one. nookie, and they're yeah. all based on you know your, your your sexual orientation. Your sexual orientation. So in this particular case, you have all of them, just in case. Look at this now. This is in, see now. Here's the the the. Talk about, hold on one second. Hold on. I'm he's grabbing everything. <laughs> he, <laughs> Scott is down. so yeah, possessive down. today oh, possessive. and so excited about all this. I can't no, believe but it. I want to just I'm getting up. you a subscription. <laughs> you know, I'm going to press the Arnie. gift button and, and I'll be sending Scott one of these. Arnie Sherman. Here's what this is. <laughs> right. This is a Spotify playlist. This is really smart. Oh, good And songs. basically all good songs to get in the mood. And there are about 20 songs on here. All you need is Marvin Gaye's sexual healing and that's enough. That well, you know. does oh, Arnie please. know his stuff or not? But the first song is Let's Get It Up. By Let's Marvin Gaye, and then yeah. some salt and pepper, and and you, so what do you do? You create a play a playlist in Spotify yeah. for your clients. For every different box, we have a different playlist. So okay. We we they can go onto our Spotify, follow that playlist if they want to. They can just create their own playlist because we're giving them the list itself. So lots of different. Where's options. Prince? I want to be your lover. It's on a different one. Oh, I'm sure. And you know, Spotify actually doesn't have a lot of prints. Prince oh, Prince is, really? he, he held himself, you know, he put himself. Yeah. He wouldn't uh, let anybody use right. stuff. No, not no. On, you can't find him on YouTube. All right, so this is. What about list. Barry White? Love There's people, a little lot Barry of, White. A lot <laughs> of babies have been born to yeah, Barry White, yeah. for sure. Suggested Nookie, what's this? Those are just the erotic stories. More stories? So we have three different stories, one for each orientation. Okay, so now in our box we have Pop Rocks. This is, yes, again, just a commercial, like a fun little box for you guys. Matt. Very cool. Thank you. There's no vibrator. I'll be right eating here. those pretty soon. What is this? This is a, what? In, this is, oh, a tickler. Okay, tickle me tickler. This is tickle really... me Elmo? No, that's a, that's for a different demographic. <laughs> <laughs> ah, okay. It's a, okay, it's, it's a feather a, an erotic, a yes. feather. It's a feather thing to tickle. You never and, know. And, you never know what you could do with that. And so then many things. a collection of lip gloss. That's actually for your nipples. Oh, it is. <laughs> so it is. <laughs> it's edible. What is this? Edible. this is, also holding... edible paint. Edible paint. Mm-hmm. So edible paint, and edible uh, ointments. Mm-hmm. Okay, and then and, that, then, and that, you, that is a vibrator. I forgot that I threw that in there for you. You guys. need to Little keep this vibrator. in your car <laughs> as a as a safety. You know, in case you're stuck out in the wilderness, you could eat this stuff and survive for a few days. <laughs> for a day. A few day for a, a day or day, two. Maybe. The Pop Rocks in particular would so be Pop useful. Rocks, Tickler, a vibrator, and other assorted and a partridge edibles. This and is a beautiful. Pear tree. And that's just for, for you guys. And I have to tell everybody on air the packaging is very tasteful. It's very discreet, but it's also inviting and it's very, it's, it, it's as well a designed. recipient of this, it's really well designed. It, who and it's do, all who about designed the that all for you? Yes. Who's my branding person? That's right. Uh, Spider McKnight with Six Pony Hitch. Oh, yes. this is great. This is all good stuff. I mean, I've She's seen a amazing. lot of classy stuff, yeah. and this is very, very hey, well and you conceived. Notice that that is. It has a magnetic closure. A magnetic. Beautiful. You put so this, this back in so there's a full Look full at that. Repertoire. So on my shelf, I put my box, and it stays shut. And this is really nicely done. So yeah. packaging, you don't, they're not skimping on packaging no. here. This is all about making a presentation. But the, yeah. but the non... Um, uh, you know the uh, this this is sort of the sponsor version of it and the right. and the recruit what the the real kit's much larger it's, right it's a lot bigger uh, mostly because <laughs> the products come in larger packages sure uh, we also have a die cut of the X so that like flap in the front is orange and then there's a die cut of the X on nice. the outside but yeah there those are going to be arriving in the next week or so our guest is Meg Ross founder of the Nookie Box here on what do you know with Scott and Arnie and this is one of those th- th- look at how the time has flown by <laughs> well okay, I've, we have as I said I've never left. seen you this excited that's we should have a staff meeting now because you'd be <laughs> revved big, up I'm, you're like the you've become George Patton you know here General Patton as a result of this let me ask you this I love successful businesses yeah, well, success, so did you need money to get started? Did you have an angel investor that helped you get launch this? I, I most of the money that I I needed to get started, I put in myself. Mm-hmm. I, I have taken out a line of credit and a little bit of a credit card. 
Uh-huh. Okay. But we are looking at moving on to the next step of VC funding. So sure. that's where we're going. Next. And and if and if you and how much how much money are you looking for? Probably three to five hundred. And, to start and, with. and what's what that gonna, for? Yeah. What do you do? What are you going to do with that? Yeah. Uh, more advertising. The the PR piece is very expensive. And sure. I, and we really need to make sure that we have uh, the PR consistent for a while sure, to, right. to really gain traction. Um, also, just some operating capital. I mean, I've I've got a couple of people that need to to be working a little bit more often because I can't keep up with the demand. That's, that's, kind you of, know, that's, that's, that's a terrific. problem to have. Sure. Sure. I was just going to say, this is a very competitive field and a very competitive competitive industry. So your marketing really has to be smart and it has to be efficient because yes. if it's not, that's where all your money is going to go. And yeah. you're, you know, you're bidding for Google AdWords yep. and things of that nature. Yeah. And you I mean, get out of hand. And we're and we're working on on really honing that in and working with a local company also for some of our advertising called Luminad. I yeah, know those not, guys. Those are they're great guys. They're by by the way, the audience the audience cannot see Meg Ross, but I wanted to point out to the audience that she's wearing the same color as her <laughs> as the color of her company and the color of the wrapping and the color of uh, of her product line. I don't think that's by accident, Meg. No, is it's it? Not. No, it's not. It's not. It's not. So I'm let me ask sure. you this: I'm unforgettable today. Uh, that's that's yeah. In that orange, well, you can check out our our Facebook page, right? You'll, and you'll be, see a picture. You'll be able of her. to see a picture of Meg. So, based on your experience so far are there some products or some things you hadn't thought about and would you be open to or as part of your business plan to develop your own proprietary products Uh, yes i would absolutely want to have our own products developed Um, that's a long-term plan for sure I, i also think that one of the things that we'd like to see happen is the signature boxes continue to expand and we have curated boxes by people that are experts in their field. So, I mean, honestly, like a um, a bondage box. Sure. It's right. like intro to bondage. Right. You know, so for people that have questions, somebody that's an expert in that field is the one that develops it. We put it all together and, and sell it right. for them. And what what is the thought? I, I noticed among the products that have been curated – you don't include you include a playlist, but you don't include any video. Is there is there a reason why that's not included, or is it, or uh, I mean, what's the thought about not putting a little video in there of some sort? Mostly, it's we we don't have enough money, money. to do all. But that if you stuff, did, if you had you money, know? would you? Yeah, have... I think video is is one of those things that you you want to include wherever you can. Yeah, and a tasteful. I mean, you already have somebody advising you, yeah. and you you know you're not going to go to the extremes. You know, you're not going to have my face to scare anybody or any of that sort of thing. But you, you, you would that would be something if you had more resources you would include. Absolutely, and we do have one video that uh, Six Pony Hitch has created for us. That's just a little animated video on how to use a vibrator, and it has right. just these little shapes. So kind of t- bouncing off the I- idea. It's the 21st century of, yeah. version of Mr. Mulligan's That's video exactly that right. he showed us <laughs> back in personal hygiene class. So true. It's like back to that class. Yeah. That but was, it's, it's much better than that. I, I, with, with, look, <laughs> there is no question. I mean, that was the era where they not only showed you that to scare you out of ever having sex, mm-hmm. but then they also showed you movies about smoking marijuana where you went crazy and killed 500 people. Right, right. And right. drinking and driving where you... Th- off. I mean, they, they had all these scary things to show you. So anything in life that you wanted to experiment with was going to cause death or destruction right. to you. Fear yeah. and shame. Fear and Fear shame. And exactly. Shame. Exactly. The strong motivators. Well, it's, what, what's nice about this is we're talking to a local Missoula entrepreneur who's come up with a great business idea and a great plan and executing against it. You know, it's not just a theory. It's actually in it's in motion. Right. Right. Literally, which is fantastic. And it's exciting to hear about all the different areas that you want to go into, yeah. and you're being smart about it, though. You're not rushing into it. You're trying to perfect it, it looks like, and yeah. really get this down, which is, we applaud you. Thank so, you. Thank so you is so it much. organized in the, in, in, in the sense that you have weekly meetings with your team, even if, if they're video conferencing, to talk about what's next and how you're, pl- I mean, you're going to run out of this quarter stuff. Do you know what you're going to do next quarter already or in the, in the following quarter? And you're already going after product to fit in and, and to meet with your theme. I mean, is, yeah. that, is it that organized? I, well, I mean, I know what I'm putting in the next box okay. for the next quarter. Uh, I, I don't have anything for the quarter after that quite yet, but we have had meetings and on what the themes could potentially be. Right. And be- the, one of the reasons why we're not coming up with the products for those themes yet is because those, there might be new products that right. we haven't found yet. So we don't need to go that far ahead. 
But the curation piece of the the signature boxes is something that we're constantly talking to people about. So connecting with people, asking if they'd be interested in in curating a box. What helps you choose your themes, by the way? What's the what's the uh, is it just whatever comes to your head? Like alcohol. Is it right? <laughs> no, but is it like space are, aliens? Is it seasonality? <laughs> A little bit. It's a little bit of everything. Like, what what month is it going to be launched in? What's going to be going on during that month? Well, right. like if it's Valentine's Day, sure. month, you're gonna, you can't ignore that, right? Sex well, is about look, love. the election's coming Or Mother's right. Day. <laughs> so, yeah. yeah, I mean, I will say that our next box is called, or, or the theme is Sex is Hot, because it's coming out Summer. August 1st. Sure. So. And so you'll have a fan in right. there. Right, we'll have some cooling products. Some cool, you'll have a little. There might be an ice cream sandwich. There might be a little mold to make I, ice cubes that <laughs> yeah. are the that are shaped I like in Ike. a certain way. Yeah. Right, that could be your voting one. I mean, yeah, yeah. a whole bunch right. of stuff. So many things. Yeah, there's, you, every quarter there's, there's certainly a, th- a theme. You can already see that we, may be, we may be willing to volunteer. Yeah, I was Hanukkah, just, a Jewish Yeah, yeah. I was yeah. just about to Why ask, not? That, would that, you guys come over and help us with nah, the meetings, the, yeah, the curation meetings? The, the Jewish box the would have like a little <laughs> mouse trap in it, you know, and, and a sign that just said no on it. <laughs> <laughs> He's, <laughs> speak for yourself. <laughs> Well, look, this has been a fascinating hour, Arnie. Yes. What, any final parting thoughts or questions? No, I you really have for Meg? think this is. I, I think Meg's onto something. She obviously knows she is. I, th- I can just my head is spinning about all the <laughs> permutations that this could take. Yeah. I mean, it it is something. You know, it's it's one of those classic, um, you know, conundrums in which everybody partakes in this around the world. I mean, right. and yeah. but but it's one of the least talked about, you know, in normal circles and in reasonable ways topic. You know, Absolutely. you laugh about it. I mean, there are TV, every comedy show on TV touches on it. You know, like yeah. the famous, uh, you know, Seinfeld episode where they're all in on uh, oh. on self pleasure and everybody's out. I mean, the they, contest. Yeah, the contest. Right. You can't really, you know, deal with it, but everybody wants to deal with it, and this gives you a safe, protected way for people that that are not, you know, uh, fully have the confidence. To do it, you know, I'm going to walk into this store and buy all this stuff, or I'm right. going to sit around with my family or my my partner and talk about. It. This gives a nice entryway yeah. into exploring and making that part of your life better. Because as you probably know, you know, relationships break up over you know two things: money and or sex. Yeah, that's it's right. basically the two things they break up over. And while we, you can't cure the money part, I you're can't. certainly on a pathway to help with the sex part. Tell us how our listeners could access the website and uh, how they can get more information from you about you. Yeah, well, they can absolutely find us on uh, any of the social media, Facebook, Twitter. Um, we're, but we're at www.thenookiebox.com. The Nookiebox.com and all social media platforms. Our guest today was Meg Ross. Thank Meg, you so much. It was okay. a pleasure seeing you here. We'd like you to come back at some point where uh, when your business is on a on a you know upward trajectory beyond your control and talk about your overwhelming success. So we'll talk in six months. Six months. <laughs> Thanks again, Meg. We'll see you soon. Thanks, Arnie. I'll see you next week. See you next week. Thanks, Scott. guys.